By some estimates, 80% of software development is building forms. Now that is quite industry dependent. However, they are critical in most applications and a key part of forms is collecting user text inputs. So let's take a look at how we can do that with React Native. Here we have a Brave Bones React Native application and right now the view is center aligning its content and we can see an example text on screen. To collect text input, React Native provides a component called, no surprise, text input. And as we add that component, you can't actually see it, but believe me, it's there. By default, it doesn't come with any styles and that's actually a good thing because if you want to put this text input into something else that has its own border and its own icon and its own button, you can easily do that. However, it does take a style input and the styles that it supports are very similar to the styles that are supported by text. For example, we can set up a font size, a border width, a border color, a color, some padding. And when we assign that style to the text input, you can see that it looks more like a text input that you might be used to. Now, right now, according to React, this particular text input is uncontrolled. That is, its state is not managed by any of the JavaScript of our application. But we can change that by creating a new state variable with useState called message and bind the value of the text input to that message. And whenever the text changes on the text input because of some user interaction, we update the message to be the new text. Now with this change in place, you can actually use this message string variable anywhere within your JavaScript application logic. For example, we can create another text element to display this message on screen. Now, as we type a message into the text input, you can see that the message text is being updated. Now, unlike the web, there is no built-in form component in React Native that will automatically capture any of the return keystrokes and turn them into form submissions. Now, if that sounds confusing, that's a good thing. That's one less thing that you have to worry about in React Native. Because if you do want to carry out an action based on the user pressing the enter key, you can do that with a specific prop passed to the text input. The on submit editing function is something that will get invoked as the user presses the return key. And here you can see the message variable being logged with console.warn. Now there are lots of other useful props on the text input as well. And let's take a look at a few of them. For example, there is placeholder, which is some text that you can add that will get displayed while the input value is empty. For example, if we clear the message that we have right now, you can see the placeholder shows up called type in a message. And as we type some values, that placeholder disappears. Another useful prop to know about is the keyboard type. And this allows you to control the kind of keyboard that is displayed to the user. For example, we can display a decimal pad that helps the user enter decimal values, for example, .007. Now React Native doesn't have a dedicated text area input, but you can use multi-line text input but be careful if you are going to be using multi-line, you don't want on submit editing as you want the return key to enter a new line and not submit the input. And here's a demo, we input some text and then from the keyboard or from my Mac keyboard, I could do that as well. Press the return key and we get a new line. As you can see, collecting text input within React Native is pretty trivial. Join me in the next lesson in this series on React Native. Smash that like and subscribe for more to the point content like this and I will see you in the next one.